Endicott Lumber and Box, Burger's Key Shop, Giuseppe's Pizza and Subs of Binghamton, New Channel, and McDonald's. It is a chilly, slightly windy night, a great night for high school football. It's Union Endicott and Vestal here on WBNG TV 12. And good evening, everyone. I'm Mitch Gross. Joining me once again is Paul Daphne for the 35th meeting of these two schools, one of the great rivalries in upstate high school football. Paul, it should be, I guess as everyone expected, a real banger. Yeah, that's, expect that, Mitch. We were talking on the way over, a little like uh, Michigan-Ohio State a few years back, three yards and a cloud of dust. These are two rushing teams. They don't pass much, so it's going to be a lot of ground game tonight. Both clubs have lost once to Binghamton. UE picked up an earlier open season loss to a Buffalo school, but since then, they've played pretty even football. Really have, Mitch, and when you look at the statistics for the two of them, they match right down the line. In terms of rushing offense, we talk about their rushing. They're third and fourth in the lead, with Vessel being in third, UE fourth. And in defense, they match up sixth and tenth, with UE coming out a little bit ahead in terms of that. So it should, should be a real barn burner. You, Vestal has a little bit of an advantage. They've got a, a strong runner in Cordy. He's averaging 105 yards a game, 6.8 yards a carry. UE doesn't even have a single rusher in the top 20 in the league. So edge to Vestal there, edge to UE on defense. But look for a banger, folks. They're going to be hitting heads down there tonight. Especially UE's uh, Mike Kraunt, their uh, captain, uh, supposedly highly recruited, according to Coach Fran Antoline. We'll keep an eye on him tonight. Yes, he hasn't been able to play much this season. He had early season injuries. And Angeline says he's really just hitting 100% for this game. All right, we shall see. It is Union Endicott and Vestal. We'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a receiving to the right of your screen as the officials. And while we have a second, let's take a look at the Vestal offense tonight. As your front line, Tom Golubuski, Marty Johnson, Chris Hartley on the right side. The center is Dan Collins, Dan Utek, Gene Hartnett, and John Crosby. The backfield, quarterback Paul Stive, J.J. Cordy, Steve Manley, and Walt Hintner. <laughs> Huey in the familiar white course the orange helmet just about ready to get underway kicking off Kerry Avery for the Tigers and we're underway for Vestal from the four and that's Chris Pasquale finally knocked out of bounds at about the 19 where Vestal will take over Take a look at the UE defense. Of course, keep your eye on their captain. 74, Mike Crowns, Westcott, Romanovsky, Crowns, Colin, Bach up front. Welch, Guineri, Munley, Moe, Bucci, and Avery. First and 10 for Vestal just underway. Action Sports Football here on TV 12. Already have some sort of delay here. Looks like they're looking for a change in the football. Each team's allowed to use their own footballs for their run of down. <laughs> Vessel couldn't find his football. Okay, here we go. Stive, number 12, the quarterback for Vestal. Then Nicosia in motion, and they drive right up the middle. Pickup of about three on the play. J.J. Cordy for about three for the Golden Bears. Look for both teams to try to establish early the strength of their line to move the other line out of the way to get going because this game's going to be won on the ground. Neither team known for their passing, so it's certainly going to be a grinded-out game tonight, and they've got to do it quick. It's 
time it's Cordy in motion. Side looks to throw. Complete to Cordy. He's run out of bounds after picking up about four on the play. Nice little screen pass. Oh, called it third and about four for Vestal. That's the lone 25. To try a little counter there and went nowhere. Nice defense from UE. 69, Mike Guineri among those on the stop. Both teams fired up. So Vessel forced with a fourth and six. They they kicking punch. from their own 23. Back deep to receive for UE. 21 is Mike Rippick. 20 is Joe Hopko. And Hopko picks it up, and he's 35. Down almost immediately, a flag on the play. It's holding against UE. That was a 40-yard punt. End over end, no spiral, no hang time. And they'll march it back another 10 yards, holding on UE. Very slow beginning tonight. Two cautious teams as this 35th meeting gets underway. Okay, Tom Pasquale at the quarterback spot for UE. And he's going to throw right away, partially deflected. 89. Carl Bowler got a hand on that one for Vestal. Very interesting to note, Mitch. Both teams don't normally throw the ball, but tonight they're going to try to throw the ball. Oh, you come in with the thing nobody expects, and sometimes it works. Makes a big difference in the game for you. Second down for UE. From the 28. Pasquale. With 20. And there he goes. And he's going all the way. Tom Pasquale, UE. And 70 point. yard touchdown run. Watch what happens. It's out of the wishbone. He's going out of the wishbone. He takes, when he makes the turn, there's nobody there, and he goes right up through the hole, and then he's home free. He's got blockers as someone comes after him, and he's all the way just run into the end zone. That's how you start it. Just like that, Tigers are up 6-0, 9.48 to go in the first quarter. 85, Avery in for the extra point attempt. It's up. And it's good. like that, Union Endicott jumps out to a 7-0 lead. 70-yard run by Tom Pasquale. Some great blocking on the way to spring him free. Took it. Traditional wishbone. Quarterback goes down the line, starts to make the turn. If he stops, he pitches out. If not, he goes. And he just took off and kept going. Kickoff again for UE. Back deep to receive. Three, three deep for Vestal. With Pasquale. Kittner and Nicosia. Avery with a good kick. At the goal line. At Nicosia. Referee says he's stepped back in the end zone, so we'll take it first and 10 on the 20. 
9.46 to go in this first quarter. Yui out to a quick 7-0 lead. Bessel's going to want to come back now. They don't want to have to punt on the first series again like they did last time. They're going to want to move the ball, start to establish their running game. Of course, they'd love to get the long run like Yui did, too. They send Golubuski wide to the right. And a quick handoff. Loose ball on the play. Bessel recovers. Cordy stayed with it. 74 crown, 69 Guineri, a number of UE tacklers in on the play. A run like that fires up both sides, offense and defense, and UE's defense right now is fired up. Okay, they bring two receivers wide left. Golubuski, top of your screen, wide right. Nicosia goes in motion for Vessel. Stive the straight handoff up the middle. Kidner and nothing on that. Crown's in on the stop again for the Tigers. Third and ten for Bethel. Take a third and about 11. They lost about a yard on the play. Looks like another change of football here. That seems to be the highlight of this first quarter so far. It's an official timeout. Uh -huh. Stive went off the field. He may have an equipment problem. Look, they're working on his helmet on the other side. It looks like Stive has a, an equipment problem. Coming back on now. Third and 11 for Vestal, who so far has been stalled. 83, Crosby. Wide receiver to the left. Kittner in motion. Stive throwing. It's complete to Crosby. It's a first down. Knocked out of bounds at about the 34. 15-yard pass play. Good. John Crosby for Vestal. He's got good protection. He's got time. Crosby's in front of the defender, able to pick up the yardage, make the catch, and then step out of bounds. Dave Mull knocked him out of bounds. First and ten for the Bears. <laughs> Little delay. Stive on the keeper and goes nowhere. That UE defense is just swarming in there. Among, uh, uh, among many on the tackle, 82, Mark Westcott. Second and 11 for Vestal. From their 34. Stive again on the keeper. Maybe gets back to the original line of scrimmage. 35, Paul Munley on the stop for UE. Seven and a half to go in this first quarter. It's seven nothing. UE over Bestall. Third and ten. Long way to go. 83 Crosby drops below your screen. He's to the bottom. Nicosia goes in motion. Stive wants to throw again. Goes out to Nicosia. A great defense again for UE. 36 Chris Welch with a nice stop. Bestall will be forced to punt once again. Vessel drops back, Hopko and Rippick, 20 and 21. Kicking from the 33. Rob Kirst with the punt. 21 is Rippick. Turns the ball about five yards. 
Huey takes over first and 10 on their 45. About a 36-yard kick on that one. A little less than last time, but not bad. Okay, Tom Pasquale directing the UE offense. That's Mike Bucci on the carry. Pickup of about three for UE. Let's take a look at the UE offense tonight. Tight end Osborne, Sinclair, Hover, Barnes, of course, Krauss, who goes both ways, Weston and Busenel. The backfield, Pasquale, Hopko, Mole, and Hills. again and enough for first down it looks like take a look at this again Paul. good blocking up through the off guard position and going up down here it is get some good blocks in the backfield breaks through secondary has to take him down after about a seven eight yard game left side of the line barnes crouch and weston bringing bucci for a ue first down Pasquale with the pitch out, and a flag's on the play. That's Joe Hopko, but flags are flying. He'll be holding against UE. In the backfield. Take another look be. at this one. Maybe we can spot the holding. Right there. 24, Bucci. See it help, help break him free, turn him around. Oh, we have a couple seconds. Let's introduce the Vestal defense to you tonight. Front four, Boulder, Sharp, Johnson, and Jim Fusetti. Four linebackers, O'Hara, Chesmore, Utech, and Beecher. And the halfbacks, Harding, Howard, and Pasquale. First at about 25 for UE from the 41. Pasquale again off to Bucci. And that left side of the line is opening up holes this evening early. UE's down linemen are opening up some big holes for those backs. Once again, Barnes, Krauss, and Weston on the left side. Picks up about 10 on the play. Second and about 11 for UE. Option pass. Oh, this is a beauty. Oh. Hopko. Beautiful spiral. Nicely thrown, just out of reach. And just beyond the reach of Greg Osborne. Okay, UE faced with a third at about 12. Pasquale with the keeper goes nowhere. Couldn't go anywhere on that one. A couple of uh, Vestal men were in the backfield with his guys. No pitch out for him. So Vestal now, uh, UE, excuse me, forced to punt. 420 to go in the quarter. 7 nothing UE. Kicking from the 48. That'll be Kerry Avery. Nice high kick. Did he touch it? it? He touched it. No, referee. No. Flags all over the place. Not <laughs> flags, just markers. They're marking them all over. Take a look okay. at this again. He touches it. High school football cannot advance the fumble. This is what the call is. Let's see it. Referee says he touches it. Now he's going to take it and can take control of it. But he's not going to be allowed to advance it. That's all. It looked like the receiver just couldn't make up his mind whether mm -hmm. he wanted to take the ball or not. That's for sure. Chris Squall back there. UE 
their ball. And they continue to march. Things certainly not going in Vestal's favor right now. goes to Hopko, picks up about three, down to about the four-yard line. Now he can get a, they can get a first down and have four downs to get it in, too. Right. They don't need a big one here. Third and one. The pitch out. And he's in. Mike Bucci, six more for UE. Well run play, let's watch the replay now. Went to the left side as they've been going all evening. Brings it down, makes the pitch out, he's way out there by himself, and it's just a race to the corner. Eighty-five, Tino Fiore in to attempt the extra point. For UE. Snaps down. Not that time. And a little scuffle breaks out momentarily on the field. 302 to go in this first quarter. Union Endicott 13. Vestal nothing. That kick. He's the best field goal kicker in the league this year. He's had four, which is the top in the league so far this year. Compass Claw with the 70-yard run. Bucci, a carry for 24 yards. That's the story so far tonight here at Vestal. Four yards on the Bucci carry, 70 yards for Pasquale, okay. Avery gets his foot into that one again. Pasquale. They've got a wall. Nice return by Pasquale up to the 34. Vesco set up a very nice wall for that one. Stive sends Crosby to the left wide. Goal of Nicosia this time wide right. And nowhere again. We flag have a on flag. the play. We have a flag. 73 Cole initially on the stop for UE. It's against Vesta. to go in this first quarter. They're going to mark Huey it on. 13. Vestal nothing. <laughs> Call is blocking below the waist against Vestal. So it'll be first at about 20 for the Bears. From the 16. on the carry and picks up about eight on the play. That I believe is Vestal's biggest gain on the ground so far in the game. Stive sends Cordy in motion this time. They'll go up tackle again. 
Steve Manley on the carry for Vestal. Vestal finally beginning to get on track here. Nice handoff to Cordy, finds the hole, goes up the middle, stops in the secondary. Hartley Johnson and Golubuski blocking on the right side for the Bears. <laughs> and Too many in motion. <laughs> Everyone was in motion that time. <laughs> Too many people moving. Oops. <laughs> you can almost see it on their face. They saw each other was moving and they went, uh-oh, I think we blew it. The dance of the Golden Bears. <laughs> <laughs> they both knew they were wrong. Somebody, somebody made the mistake. They didn't know which, but it was there. It's an important game to both teams. So even though they both got fine records, 6-2, 7-1, neither of them are getting to go to a bowl game this year. So this, this is the game for both teams, even though any year it's the game for both teams but especially so this year it's fun okay you the penalty and now Vesta will have to punt that's right fourth and four they decided to punt just under a minute to go in this first quarter Goes nowhere. Shank that one over the U over the Vestal bench. Just shanked it. Maybe five, six yards. Where they're marking it. Where they're marking it, it's only going to be a two-yard punt. He just caught that with the side of his foot. So UE with great field position on the Vestal 40, 38 seconds to go in the quarter. Pasqua wants to throw. And right through the hands of Chris Busanel. Pasqua has an impressive arm. It's surprising UE has not thrown more than they have this year. Second and 10 for UE. 86, Buzanel wide to the lower part of your screen. The pitch out to Hopko. Joe Hopko in he fumbles. fumbles. It'll be UE's ball. Last possession, UE before it goes out of bounds. You're going to see the replay here and see how he loses it. Nice pitch out. Cuts in, heads along the line, changes his arm, and loses it as he gets hit. It was a good hit to make him lose it. Knocked the ball loose. All right, an official timeout, an injury on the UE sideline. We can see through the crowd. We'll get you the number. I think our chances of seeing through the crowd, however... It is a Vestal player, I believe. Number, number 72. 72, Tim Fusetti. I was just shaking up a little bit going after that ball. There was a lot of people in there. All right, it's third and 12 for UE. About 25 seconds left in this first quarter. Time to go right up the middle. Not much on that. Fourth down. Hills gained about three yards on that. Time for one more play. Ten seconds on the clock. And they'll punt. They may not even get the punt off. Three seconds. Two. One. They'll get it off right before the uh, whistle. And it's another high one. And it's out at about the four. 
The old coffin corner worked on that one. Great punt from Terry Avery. And we're at the end of one quarter of play. It's Union Endicott 13, best of nothing. We'll take a time. Yeah. Back. A quick run right up the middle, picks up a yard, maybe two. First period, all UE. Vestal just has not had good field position on any possession they've had of the ball. They've just been pounded back. This is the deepest they've been, however. And it's it's just been tough with them. And UE, great, great plays. A few breaks, too, that haven't hurt them. Kintner in motion. They go off tackle. Dave Mole on the stop for UE. JJ Cordy picked up a couple on that one. Third and about one. All right, Kinder in motion again. Stive with the handoff. And Cordy leaps. It's going to be close. And an official timeout. They'll bring the chains uh, in. Are they going to measure? Yes, we'll have a measurement. Not close enough. Looks like they don't have it. They're moving it in. Put that ball back down. On the other end of the chain. Fourth and inches for Vestal. The other side to punt again. Rob Kersler, nice end over end punt. Joe Hopko. Stay right there at the 43. 42 yard punt on that one. Change the football again. Pasquale to Hopko. Picks up nothing on the play. Vestal's trying to strip the ball. That tackler went in and pulled one of those arms away, hoping to get that ball loose again. Jeff Howard among the Golden Bears on the stop. No gain, second and ten for UE. Hey, 85, Tino Fiore at the bottom of your screen. Pasquale right up the middle. Picks up a yard, maybe two. Now this is what Vesta wants to do. They would let UE march on him earlier, and now they've got to stop him, and they've got to get their own offense going if they're going to get back into this game. Third and eight for UE. At the 46. Pasquale right up the pass. Pass. Nice throw, nice play. And a quick first down. Quick play, nice pass. Pasquale to Greg Osborne, here it is again. Steps back, makes a fake, hands pass, beautiful. Just a quick arm, good release. Once again, Fiore comes wide to the left. And Jerry Hills, the fullback, right up the middle. up about five second and five for UE good sustained drive here to start off the second quarter that's Cherry Hills again
will be a quick handoff. Everybody still thinks he's got the ball. The squad doing a nice job hiding the ball. Hopko this time. Joe Hopko with a big game. Down to about the 15. Made a nice cut. Coming back inside to pick up those extra yards. And they're going to measure. Looks good. Nose of the ball just across. Fiore out of your picture right now, the bottom left. He's wide. The squall goes to Hopko. And he twists and turns for about five yards. Believe it or not, Mitch, this is the first real sustained drive of the game. Both times that UE scored, they scored within three or four plays. This is a long, sustained drive now. Jerry Hills on the carry, picks up about three. And we're coming down to the seven minute mark in this second quarter, 13-0, UE over Vestal. Fiore takes a rest. Boussinel back in for UE. And this time, Vestal's defense comes through. 80, Tim O'Hara among those on the stop. Fourth down. Will we see a field goal attempt? Yes, Fiore is in. They got Fiore in there. Fiore. He's kicked four so far this season. Okay, this attempt will be for 20 yards. 25 yards for Fiore, excuse me. It's up, and... It's good. It's through there. Tito Fiore with a 25-yard field goal. 6.16 to go in the half. 16-0. Huey over Vestal. Ten plays, 57 yards, culminating in the field goal. Heating up a good five minutes on the clock. Also, as you said, the only sustained drive of the game so, so far. far. Vestal's really going to need to some, get something going on this series. Back deep to receive for Vestal, 11 is Nicosia, 27 is Kintner, 24 is Pasquale. And Kerry Avery to kick off for UE. Low swim. Forty-five. That's Steve Manley who had the honors that time. Takes it up to about the thirty-seven yard line. Field's actually in pretty good condition tonight, considering all the wear and tear this field has gotten this year. They play soccer on it. They play football. The band marches on it. But the only bad spot is out toward the middle of the field in the center of that V. Mm -hmm. 34, Cordy goes in motion. That's Cordy. Great defense. Mike Krauss on the stop. Caught him from behind. Yep. Cordy looked like he was getting loose there, and Krauss got him around the ankles, took him down. Krauss at 6'3", 245. He's fast. Krauss coming out, too, right now. Some of his equipment's come loose. Okay, 
Nicosia in motion this time. And a nice run from Steve Manley. Take a look at this one. They opened up a hole in the uh, nice hole for him. UE line. Watch it on the left side, top part of your screen. Cuts through. Gets out some distance in the secondary and picks up some extra yardage with a man on his back. They, right, they went right where Krauss wasn't. Krauss was on the sideline. They ran right down their throat that time. Cordy. Four Bethel. He's a running away. Only one man can stop him, and that man does. 24, Mike Bucci with the saving tackle. Cordy pick up, breaks the tackle just off the line of the line of scrimmage. We'll see it on the replay. Cordy comes through. He breaks the tackle there, and now he's off to the races. And Bucci is going to get by number 12 and take down Cordy just before the touchdown. Saves the touchdown. Officials timeout. That is Vest, only Vestal's third first down in the game so far. They have had trouble getting moved going. 40 yards on the carry that time. Here we go. First and goal from about the one. They're looking to punch it in now right away. They do for six. Side just hang on to it, takes it right in. All side gets the Bears on the board. 4:29 to go in the half. It's 16 to six. UE. The replay we just see Side just going to hang on to the ball, just takes it across. Loses it after he gets in, however. Now, this will be interesting. If they go for it, they're still going to have to do some work. They're going to need two other scores. Maybe we'll see them fake it and go for two. This is Rob Kirst. Nope, they're going to take the one sure one. And he gets everything into that one. That's good. 4.28 to go in the half. UE 16, Vestal 7. Four plays, 63 yards on the drive. And with Kirsten kicking for Vestal, he was injured earlier this year when we did the Binghamton game. Right. Unable to, to kick, and he's a potent weapon. They think that he can kick 30, 40 yard field goals. So maybe that's what they're hoping for. Let's get it moving. But at least they've got the ball moving now. They've got on the board. They've, I'm certain they feel they're back in this game now. Ripick and Hopko back deep for UE. Is Rob Kirst. Kirst gets his foot to that one as it's well. In the end zone. That's Hopko. They'll take it first. We have ten. penalties. We've got flags on the field. That was Kerry Avery and Rob Kirst. 83 Avery for UE. And we'll see. Apparently Avery's been thrown out of the game. 83 Kerry Avery. As he sits down on the bench, just beneath us, he's out. Avery being consoled by his teammates. Right below our camera, down by the 50-yard line. It looks like his day is done. Of course, most of us were watching the kick play, but when you turned around and looked back, the two of them were laying on the ground at the 50-yard line. Now it looks like they're gonna, they're gonna, are they gonna call it back and kick it over? 
That's why the officials carry a rule book and we don't. <laughs> There's Avery. In some of its finer moments, Avery has been a finalist in the TV 12 bowling, high school bowling championships. And they'll pack on the penalty they'll as well. Pack on the penalty. So it'll be from the 10 instead of from the 20. Best if they had a choice would have taken this, I'm sure, because they put it in the end zone from the other distance, kicking it again. They still would have just had it in the end zone. So. Okay, there's the penalty against UE. Costly penalty. Avery is gone for the evening. 428 to go in the half. And UE takes over from their 10. Costly penalty, not so much in yardage, but in terms of losing a starting player in your secondary. Okay, Pasquale, hands off. And Mike Bucci picks up a few on that one. Gets it across the 10. These kids are really charged up right now on both sides, and the officials are going to be jumping on them very quickly here. Second at about 16 for UE. And once again, Vestal's defense comes through big and a flag on the play. Got another flag on the play. Jerry Hills, the ball carrier. It'll be against UE. It's an offensive holding. Take another look, see if we can pick up the, the holding. The call's made on the top of the screen. Watch the top of the screen. I think it's just out of our view there, because there's a flag coming in late made at the top of the screen. All right, third down now for UE. Quick kick. quick kick. Not much to that. We call that a UE roll stops at the 40 with 338 to go in the half Yui seems rattled at this moment and we've got and now we got <laughs> it's Yui's ball if we could take the replay let's see are they saying Vessel touched it uh, Apparently the referee Vesto touched it. All right, here Here's it is. Kick. I don't know who I did. I don't know either. Now we have a timeout. Now we're having a timeout. Vesto calling, a, calling timeout. a timeout. I don't know who touched that ball. If that's what they're saying. I wonder if we could take a look at it again. Can we see? This? Let's take a look it at it one more. It may have been touched at the line of scrimmage. That may be the problem. Let's see what happens here. Maybe coming over the line of scrimmage since it's, since it's so low. Let's see if we can... No. I don't see how we could have it any clearer. That ball me. was not touched. Dick Bessel's coach is coming onto the field. He wants to know what's going on. That's, that's Bill McGuire. Somebody saw somebody touch it. And we played it back twice. I know there have been calls for instant replays in the NFL. <laughs> well, one of the gentlemen in black and white saw something, we didn't. He runs it. He runs the game. The we just call it. Okay. 
first and ten for UE. And some great defense. 75, Marty Johnson knocks down Hopko. You can bet. Sometimes a play like that can really get another a team fired up that, that has lost the call. And there they're coming through. Shoots right through number 75 and makes the tackle. Beautiful job by Don Johnson. Marty Johnson. Wrong network. This is Marty Johnson <laughs> for Vessel. Jerry Hills up the middle. Excuse me, Jim Crundon on the carry. All right, Fiore comes wide to the bottom of your screen. Pasqual to Hopko. And maybe a half yard. Fourth down now, they stopped him. Tim Fusetti among those in on the tackle. Fourth and five for UE, coming down to the 220 mark in the half. London back to punt for UE. Nice punt. And it rolls to the 20. 202 to go in the half. About a That's 30 ball. About a 37 yard punt. Bessel's going to, going to want to move quickly now inside of two minutes for them. They sure would like to get on the board one more time. Nicosia in motion. Dive went to Manley who went maybe for a yard or two. Crowns among those in on the stop again coming at the, at the half of course. The halftime entertainment, we'll take a look at some of that, as well as the halftime statistics. All right, that's Golubuski wide right to the bottom of your screen. Cordy goes in motion. Dive to Cordy. Cordy fumbles and gets it back. Good defense from Paul Mundley, 35. This is the third time Vestal's done this pass play tonight. And they really, to make it successful, need to get some blockers out there with him. Here he's going to drop it, but fall down on it again. We have a timeout on the field. Vessel's taking a break. Third and three, a minute and two seconds to go in this half. 16 to seven, UE. San Pasquale, a 70 yard run. Mike Bucci, a four yard run. Field goal, that's the 16 for UE. And Paul Stieb with the keeper for about one Better and the extra point. 40-yard run, very important in that. Right. Touchdown for Stott. And it's yet to be seen how important that last call was on the quick kick. It may make absolutely no difference in this game. And, of course, the loss of Avery could have an effect. Yet to be seen, he's in the secondary. That deep back for them. That's J.J. Cordy with the ball. And we have a flag again. Mark Westcott on in the, the backfield. Holding UE. It's against UE. Take a look, see if we can spot it this time. It's the 
Mark Gastineau rule. No celebration. Very expensive penalty. That's Cordy. He loses the ball. Gets it back. And loses a couple yards. You better be careful. That's twice he's played basketball with it. UE obviously trying to strip the ball. See, we'll see it on the replay now. Goes through, has the ball stripped, bounces right back up to him. Though. 67, Ro Ron Romanowski got the hand in there to strip him of the ball momentarily. Could be the last play of the half here. Dive will throw. Incomplete to Cordy, right off his hands. Clock stops with four seconds to go. Tessa will get one more play. Dive again to throw. Decides to keep it. And that's the end of the first half. It's Union Endicott and Vestal. They've had four penalties called on them for 40 yards. Been some costly penalties, too. Vestal has turned the ball over twice, both of them on kicks. That was there. For the rushing yardage, the teams have run the ball about the same amount of times. Vestal has run the ball 21 times, UE 22 times. But a big difference in yardage, and that probably really reflects the score. The passing, not a lot of yardage. Neither team has really passed that much either. Vestal, however, has completed four of their five attempts. UE only completing one of their four attempts. Total yardage, not too much difference there. The score really isn't thrown away, but that slight difference is, is the big hit. I know we were noting during our, a commercial break why uh, UE hasn't had Pasquale throwing more. An impressive arm is just a question of does he have the receivers? That's been a question all season. He's, he's had four TD passes during the season and only one interception. He's thrown 42 times in eight games. That's really not many times. He's thrown almost that much in this game already and had 14 completions. The question is, the, the arm looks real good. It's, it's the first time I've seen him throw like that. It's certainly an impressive throw. In that first uh, half, he had about a 40-yard pass in the air that was just beyond the reach of one of his receivers. But he, he certainly looked good throwing the ball. Um, in terms of Stive, he's, he's thrown it a lot of the little short passes, mm -hmm. so he's, he's had more completions in terms of that. Now second half. Changes, if any, for both sides? Just... Vestal's got to play strong defense, which they were doing near the end of the first half. If I was Vestal's coach, I would have been in there saying, you're doing it right now. We've got it together. We can go out there. We can stop them. We've been doing it near the, this, this last part of the game. Let's go out there and do it. To get the officials, Vestal's got to be upset with the officials. I'm sure they think they've had some problems, but they're going to go out there, and that's what they've got to do. Do. UE's got to get back to what they were doing at the beginning of the game. Momentum is switched to Vestal now. But it's a, football's a game of momentum. You see it every Sunday in the NFL, every week, Saturday in college football, mm -hmm. and it's which team gets the momentum as we come into this second half. All right, as you watch Vestal's marching band, once again, it's Union Endicott 16, Vestal 7, coming up next week here on TV 12. We go to the bowl way here in the third quarter, and we are underway, third quarter. Good deep kick. Hopko takes it at the four. Doesn't get much on that. J.J. Cordy among those on the stop. <laughs> All right, first and 10 for Vessel. Excuse me, Union Hendicott. At the 11, that's Tom Pasquale. The pitch out. Mike Bucci. Close to the first down. Stopped by Howard, Jeff Howard, and 32, Tom Harding. Held on to the ball to the last second, then made the pitch out. Second and one for UE. 
Santino Fiore to the top of your screen. Wide. Pasquale with the keeper. Tom Pasquale. He's got some help. He's going. He's going. Keeper. That exact same play. 79 yards. Top of wall. And we're going to see the replay. Takes it down the right, gets away, turns across, breaks one tackle, and then it's off to the races. Goodbye. Looks over his shoulder a couple of times, takes it into the end zone. This game is only 59 seconds old, and it's right now 22 to 7 UE. Fiori in for the extra point attempt. It's up. And it's good. 11.01 to go in the third quarter. 23 to 7 Union Endicott over Vestal. And they strike. They strike quickly. They haven't wasted time in either half coming right out and scoring quickly on the out of the wishbone. He turned it up both times and went, found the hole and kept going. The squad with runs of 70 and 79 yards. 88 yards in two plays. Not a bad average. 44 yards. <laughs> Kicking George Terry Avery, of course, uh, got the early gate in the first half. So Fiore, the extra point kicker, assumes additional duties. Or kickoff. High, end over end. And it's dropped by Walt Gittner. Gold Abusey there, okay. Okay, this is Paul Stive, of course, the quarterback for Vestal. Nicosia goes in motion. Huey showing the blitz. Cordy breaks one tackle. 36, Chris Welsh on the stop, along with 24, Mike Pucci. You see on the replay in just a moment, you see that Cordy does break one tackle as he comes across the line. Gets a hole, breaks that tackle right there. Picked up. Picked up the blitzing Guineri very well. Second at about six for Vestal. That's Steve Manley. Bucci Again. dropping him as he tries to make the turn. 35, Munley looks shaken up a bit on the play. He was holding his wrist for a second over at the UE side. Third and one. Or Vestal. That's a 31. Kittner. Excuse me, Manley, Manley. Nice hole on the home. right side. And they'll move the chains, of course, first down. Nice carry from Steve. Finds a hole. Picked up a couple extra yards after being caught around the ankles by Mike Bucci. Right, they load the right side with Golubuski and Nicosia, and they go with Steve Manley again. Up to the midfield stripe. Manley's carried three times in a row. Picking up 25 yards on the last three carries. Golubuski and Nicosia to the right. Back to the eye. Now they move Cordy. A 
maybe a gain of a half yard. And Lee again. Make it third and about one. Cordy. J.J. Cordy was plenty for the first down. He's got the first down. Pucci on the stop again for UE. Nice little hip dip is what's going to keep picking up the extra two or three yards he needs. Handoff goes down the line, cuts through the hole, makes a little dip, gets out in the open, a couple extra yards. Good block from Dan Utek to help spring Cordy. 8.20 to go in the third quarter, 23 to 7, UE. Manley again. Picks up about six, maybe seven. Manley's just going over Utek, Collins, and Harnett right now. He's had four or five runs here right in a row. Pushing up that line, he's picking up six, seven yards of carry. He averaged 6.8 yards a carry this season. Second and about four for Vestal. That's Cordy tries to turn the corner. Oh, he's driven out of bounds. It's going to be very close to first down. Within a yard or so. He'll be short. Third about a yard. Looks like he was trapped in the backfield there and got a, got around the corner enough and then pulled away, got in a couple extra yards out of it. Dive to Manley. Off the left side. Picks up the first down and a few more. Manley has turned into the workhorse of this drive. <laughs> He's just putting his head down and barreling over Utah and Collins. Timeout for UE. 7.28 to go in the third quarter. 23 to 7 UE at this point. Good nine plays so far in this drive. Six of them, six carries by Manley that kept them all in the ground. They started back on their own 22 and they moved it up to the 28 of UE. So they're on the march right now. But if UE comes back and strikes quickly again, Long march, those are not. Bethel needs to score on this drive, stop Yui on the next one to get back, really get back into this game. they're out there trying to make a few adjustments trying to nail down the right side of of ue's line to get them to hold that ground where manley's been going up over the left side so many of the plays in the drive probably look for Krauts to move over there a little more that's exactly what he's done he's not playing on the nose anymore and they go right up the middle jj cordy Now, Vestal's been going over the left side significantly or on right sweep. This time, they're going to go right up the center with Cordy. Through a gap, picks up some big yardage right there. Dave O'Hara with the tackle. For UE. Big 16-yard gain for him on that play. Up Manley the again. Yeah, Steve Manley. On this replay, you'll see Manley takes the ball, is hit at the line, but just keeps powering with his legs to pick up that extra yardage, get away from the tackle. There he's hit, gets away, tripped up, picks up about four or five extra yards just by keeping his legs pumping. Down to about the five now. That's 
That's Cordy. And, and there's six. He's in. Nice run off the right side. Broke a couple of tackles. He hit. He keeps powering. He gets himself into the end zone. Nice sustained drive from Vestal. Total of 12 plays to go the 78 yards they needed. They chewed up a lot of time on that clock, too. Mm -hmm. They're going to go for the two. Nick Casilla in motion. Dive. And off. going. He's still pushing. Uh-uh. Hey, Forty comes up short. 6.27 to go in the third quarter. It's UE 23, Vestal 13. And on the bottom of the pile, number 77 for Union Endicott. Steve Hover. It's interesting to know who UE puts back for their blockers on a kickoff. Their second, just in front of the deep receivers, they have a couple of big guys, Scott Schaefer and Mike Stout, go 230 and 227 apiece to set up the blocking for those deep receivers. Hopko and Rippick back deep to receive. Rob Kurtz punch. That'll be Hopko from the five. We've Doug, got another flag. Doug Wilkinson on, on the stop for Vestal. This one appears to be on Vestal. Huh? And it's a personal foul. Get the break, get good field position. First and ten at their 35. Clock running with 6.20 to go in the third. Jerry Hills right up the middle. Pick up a four, second and six. down and more up to the midfield mark Union Endicott starting to do some driving now quick handoff through the gap up the middle pulled down in the secondary good block from Mike Stout 76 in now for UE Bill Up another five, second and five. Jerry Hills now the workhorse for UE. He's carried the last three times. Total of 20 yards on the three carries on this drive. Okay, Fiore comes wide to the bottom of the screen. A squall on the keeper. Pick up about three. Give him three. Third down. UE. Up the middle, they went with Mills to her hills. And it's no a stopper. He's fourth down. UE sending in the punting team. 41, Chris Chesmore among those on the stop for Vestal. UE's had a very successful punting game so far tonight, burying Vestal deep in their own territory on a number of occasions. Crunden. Huh? 
takes the vessel bounce, I guess you'd call it, downs it at the 19. Four minutes to go in this third quarter. Tim O'Hara got out of the way of that ball after it bounced very quickly. And you never know when they may call it somebody touching it. Decided to get out of the way yeah. very quickly. He saw that. Nice. Stop. Hit him in the backfield. 73 making the hit. Rob Cole for UE. Cole was in the backfield. As soon as the handoff was made, he was there. Second and about 14 for Vessel. They'll go with Cordy. He picked up a yard. He was lucky. About 13 yards to go if they're going to get that first down. All right, Stib rolls, wants to throw. Bounces after him, too. Ooh, almost intercepted. Right through Chris Welch's hand. Welch thought he had it, too. He's hungry for that ball. And the punting situation, fourth and a long 14 for Vessel. Rippick and Hopko drop back. Curse will punt for Vestal. Krauss was in there pretty close. That's Rippick. Lots of green jerseys. And Utech with the big Bear hug. One way to put it. One way to put it. They'll be starting in midfield this time. Up the middle again. Gary Hills. The work off the left side again of Barnes, Kraut, and Weston. Off the hop go. Yo, hop go. Big run. He on this place is Pasquale holding on to the ball. We watch in the replay. He's going to fake one hand off, keep it to the last second, and then pitch it out, which freezes those linebackers and gives the outside runner the chance to turn the corner. Beecher and Howard on the stop for Vessel. Gary Hills once again. Picks up five. Minute and a half to go in the third quarter. UE by 10, 23 to 13. That's Fiore, 85, the wide receiver. Pitch out again. That's Bucci. And he's driven out of bounds and a flag. That'll be on Vessel, obviously. Looks like a late hit. We'll see it on the replay, hopefully. Here we go. Comes down the line again, freezing the linebackers. Toss out. Out of bounds. Hit. There. Yeah, late hit. No, nope. man was already out of bounds. 24, Chris Pasquale.
successful five. But Cross with the keeper, and he's just short, down to the one. Starts back in that corner, doesn't it? Right, they mark it back at about the two. Second and goal for UE, 45 seconds to go in the quarter. Jerry Hill comes up short. Beecher in on the stop of Vessel, Tom Beecher. No gain on that one. Third and goal. A squall? He's in. This time. Takes the handoff, follows the runner in. Twelve seconds to go in the third quarter. UE jumps out to a 29-13 lead. Seven plays to go the 50 yards that time. Pino Fiore in for the extra point. Yep. And they'll fake it. The flag's on the play. That's good for two, but flag's no, flying no. all over. Flag's early. It was an encroachment early. Vessel was coming to block, and they were just across the line. They'll do it again. Offside, Vessel. Sending in a different team. This is the go for the two crew. Would appear so, from the one and a half yard line. Pusquall throws all alone. 87, Greg Osborne for the two. Same play as before. Exact same play, except it wasn't a fake this time. It was there. All by themselves. Here's the replay. Just over. He's wide open in the end zone. Union end to cap 31. Vestal 13. seconds to go in the third quarter. Eleven, Nicosia back deep to receive along with 24 for Pasquale. Fiori will kick off for UE. from his 12. Carries it up to about the 30. Seven seconds to go in the quarter. Cleanly. Pick up up nine, second and one for Vestal. Loose he, ball. He was hit. Vestal held on to it. And a man with the ball. 
is the man who dropped it. That's right. You watch, watch Stibel get hit. You can see his arm get hit as he tries to make the handoff there. And he just dives in the pile and gets it himself. Right, you had Ganeri uh, blitzing over the middle. See him get hit as he's trying to hand off, and that's where I got away from him. Third and about two for Vessel. J.J. Cordy breaks a couple of tackles in there, and he's off to the races. He's going. J.J. there. But we have a flag back on the 45. What we had was Dan Utek with a crunching block. He took down at least two or three UE players. They're calling it a touchdown. They signaled the touchdown. Now watch. Now watch, watch him break tackles. Now watch for Utek. Right there. there. Uh, excuse me. Clean. John Crosby. We've got a flag back on the 45 that has not yet been picked up. And it's... But we had a personal foul indicated against UE. The touchdown counts. It'll be tacked on, probably, to the kickoff. Those peppers flare a little bit, and Vessel's on the board quickly. Cordy, 63 yards. And they'll go for the two. Dive wants to throw, looking for a receiver. No. Even if he had caught it, Cordy was out of bounds by a couple feet. So they'll settle for the six. It's Huey 31, Vessel 19. 10.37 to go in the game. Vessel needed to go for that two because if they could have got two touchdowns, the two, two extra points, they would have been within two. They've got a kid with a leg, which would have put them in a position to win with a field goal. Three plays to go, 70 yards this time. 68, Scott Schaffer taken off the field for UE. He's shaken up. As you said, they'll tack it on to the uh, kickoff. I would expect we'll see this one into the end zone. Of course, will kick off from the UE 45. Hopko and Riffick back deep. We're going to see an onside kick. As they low the left side. Move his feet. <laughs> Wanted a little more room to do it with, right. I think. <laughs> I didn't think you could pick it up and pass it. <laughs> <laughs> And it's gone Got the yardage. It's gone out of bounds. He'll have to kick it again. They'll move it back. They got the yardage, but he'll they'll bring it back and kick it again. Illegal procedure. Decline. Decline. You will take it right there. Why not? Good field position. They could have got somebody there fast enough. They would have had a good shot at it. First and 10 at the 35 for UE. 10.36 to go in the game. Tigers with a 12-point lead. UE's goal now is to hang on to the ball as long as they can, eat up the clock as much as they can. The clock's on their side right now. Just what Pasquale did there. Got themselves a 12-point lead. Vessel's going to have to score two touchdowns to win this game now. Pasquale lets it go. Beautiful pass. Tino Fiore. From Pasquale to Tino Fiore. What a beautiful pass. We said he could throw. 58 yards, there it is, goes back, wait, throws, beautiful throw into his arms, 
and he just takes it in. Wow. All right, Fiore, Fiore in for the extra point. Not that time. It is good. It's over the bar. It's just made it, it over the bar. 3 to go in the game. Union Endicott, 38. Vessel, 19. Not a lot of height on Fiori's, Fiori's kick, but they get over that far angle. It didn't look like it made it. And see, Vessel's just got to be getting frustrated. Every time they seem to be going, they get a drive, they get a break on a play. Huey comes back, strikes them quick again, just knocks them back down again. 38 to 19, big lead again. All right, that's Fiore. And back deep, Nicosia at the top of your screen, Chris Pasquale at the bottom. That's Pasquale. Nice wall. Pasquale returns it to about the 31. Just under 10 minutes to go here. All right, they load the right side with Golubuski and Nicosia. And he comes out throwing. He came out looking one way when he turned around and came back. He's looking to his right. He turns around and, oh, my gosh, right in his face. Cordy could have picked up either one of them. He picked up one. The other one, one gets through. through. Second and 22 for Vestal. Side throws. Hits out of bounds. Dave Mole got the shoulder in there, but it was well overthrown. Waiting for the ball again. Third and 22. Play. You think so? It would be logical. They haven't done it yet. A little surprise. Well, they'll pitch out the Cordy. Nothing to speak of. Not what they needed. That's very sure. conservative. So naturally, the uh, fourth and a long 22 for Vessel. Very long. And the fighting team is off. That's Rippick, about to be joined by Hopko Deep, 21 and 20. Kurt, punt, nice, punt. Hopko drops it at the 45. Vessel recovers. Golden Bears ball. Vessel gets the break. That's the first time UE's turned the ball over tonight. Seventy-five, Marty Johnson. Thirty-five yard punt. Forty goes in motion. That's Steve Manley. man hurt 73 Rob Cole is limping he's gone back down again uh, too. He's down again yeah 
Looks like his right leg. I don't know if we'll able to take another look at that to see if how he got I hurt. I think it may be cramped the way they're working on his leg. Let's take his helmet off here. Here we go. See it again. 70. 73 comes in on the line. Oh, yeah. Caught his leg. Leg was caught. He looks like he twisted as he came up. Caught those spikes in the ground. We have 8.20 to go in the game. 38 to 19. UE over Vestal. There's your situation. Once again, next week here on TV 12, it's Binghamton and Elmira Free Academy. Bowl number one. They're playing it Saturday night at 7.30 in Waverly. You can see it Sunday afternoon at 4.30 here on TV 12. UE coach Fran Angeline. Foles coming off the field under his own power, so I guess he's okay. Good. You always worry about that when they catch those cleats in the ground. That can be very, very dangerous to the knee. Okay, in for Coles, 55, Myron Menachetti. Meantime, Nicosia goes in motion. Stive with the pitch out to Cordy. He wants to throw. Oh, he's going to throw back, back to Stive. We've got a flag again, two on the play. Stive out of bounds about the 21, but we have a flag back at the 42. Okay, let's see what the referee calls. What are we going to see? Personal foul. Uh, UE. UE. Vessel, I'm sure, will take the play. Let's see what happens. Watch the top part of your screen over on the sidelines where it's going to happen. That's what you're going to have. You're going to have a, some sort of personal foul because Cordy was hit after he released the ball. 82, Mark Westcott. Mark it off. They're going to add it on. Oh, that's still knocking on the door now. 21 yards on the play and add another 10 for the penalty. First and 10. Dive to Cordy. Oh, almost got away. 84, Joe San Giuliano on the stop. Cordy almost got away, but there were two defenders for one blocker. <laughs> Couldn't stop both of them. So a loss of about six, second and 16 for Vestal. Olabuski to the top of your screen. Crosby to the bottom. Nicosia in motion. Up the middle. Manley's in. Steve Manley. Right up the middle. Big hole, and he took it all the way in. Coach Bill McGuire must be warm, warm tonight. <laughs> He's not where we are. Is it warmer down on the field? Just big hole. Just took it right up to the secondary. Collins, you second. Hartley opening up the middle. Four plays to go the 45 yards they needed. Big 10-yard penalty in there, too. 38-25. UE. That's for, of course, going for the two-point conversion. Stive looks for a receiver. Right off Manley's hand. He had Manley open. 7-16 to go in the game. UE 38, Vestal 25. It's a lot of offense. A lot of offense. And these are two well softly defensive teams, too. They have added up a lot of yards. You figured we were talking about in the um, at halftime, they both were up. Let's see, Vesta was about 134, UE about 155. UE 
averages rushing 229 in a game. Bessel 255. So they were well on their way to above their averages, both of them. Twenty is Hopko, twenty-one is Riffick. Rob Kurt is number twenty for Bessel. Of course, last time they tried the onside. And looks like they're gonna do it again. Now Bessel is not out of this game. They need two touchdowns and right. one point after to tie it. Plenty of time to do it. But they've got to go quick. There it goes. They've got the yards. They and it goes out of bounds again. <laughs> At the 45, instant replay. Huey plays are being smart. Instead of trying to pick up that squib, they see it going for out of bounds. They back off, mm -hmm. let it go. Well-coached team. Most high school players want to grab that ball. They don't have the patience to let it go out of bounds. Naturally, the illegal procedure is called. It's declined. It's Huey's ball, first and 10 on their 45. <laughs> Vessel's going to want to stop them very quickly here and get the ball back to get back into this game. Tampa Squaw goes up the middle. Jerry Hill, maybe two yards. Was there anybody on Vessel's team that wasn't in on that tackle? <laughs> I don't think so. 51, Gene Hartnett. 63, Tom Beecher. And the rest of the cast. A thousand. may have another break. They're signaling. They've got it. We'll now wait for the official, the official signal. signal. That's the one that counts. No, nope, not yet. They're sorting it out. A lot of Vessel players on the bottom, that's for sure. And they're Vessel giving it to Vessel. Vessel. That's what Vessel needed. Another break. I believe it was 80. Tim O'Hara coming up with the fumble. Watch, you can see there's O'Hara right there. Watch as he follows the play. He never gets control of the ball. And O'Hara dig it in there. 6.30 to go in regulation. That's Huey's <laughs> second turnover in, in the game, and both of them have come in this half. 6.30 to go in the game, excuse me. Oh, whoops. J.J. Cordy driven back, 71. Travis Horn. In for U.E. U.E.'s defense knowing they need to stop Vestal here. Paul Stive comes out with this time. Nicosia goes in motion. They go to Cordy, and Cordy's racked up again. Nowhere. 71, Travis Horn again on the stop. Now, right, Vessel is right in that area where the, the ground is very soft and there isn't a lot of grass, and it, it's very soft in there, and it's got to be tough. We've got an official timeout right now. Cordy didn't have a uh, mouth guard. Okay, third and 15 for Vessel, coming down to the five-minute mark in the game. Huey up by 13. This time Cordy comes our way. Stive looking for a receiver. Finds Cordy and he's drilled immediately. 23, Dave Mole. Had lots of time to throw. But Cordy really was the only one out there and was hit immediately as soon as he caught the ball. Goes in motion. Lots of time to throw, but he's hit as soon as he catches. Good job hanging on to the ball. Fourth and 13. They've got to go for it. Running out of time and running out of chances here. 
They load the left side. Dive looking. And he's being pursued. He unleashes one, and it's nothing. No. Well, it's fourth down, one intercept when you're going to be able to get the ball back at the 45. Good pursuit from Mike Guineri, the middle linebacker. 69. I don't know if we could take another look, but he... He chased him around. That's right. And when he forced him to that side, side being a left-hander, has to set up differently. So he's got to freeze a second. So he's got to get quite a ways away from him before he's going to be able to throw that long one. Watch what happens. He's a left-hander. Now he's coming this way. Brings it around. Switch his hands. Let it go. And you these guys who could have caught it, just let it drop, knowing they were coming back to the 45. And we're back live. to go in the game. Time definitely against Bethel at this point. There's the situation once again. And definitely a box play there. Couple of slips. Uh-huh. Could make the handoff. Be forced down. One of the few mistakes Mr. the squad has made this evening. 2.45 to go in the game, and the clock continues to run. While we have a couple seconds, I want to thank executive producer John Muha, our director Dave Brzezinski, our statistician Seth Marlowe, and of course, all the engineers and camera people as well as Union Endicott and Bethel High School for their cooperation in bringing you this game this evening. Well, and we have a delay of game. Yeah, definitely a delay of game on UE. They can afford to take the penalty. We have a total of 60 yards worth of penalties in this game tonight. Well, I have a few more seconds while we total up the uh, the yards and get ready to wrap things up here. Once again, next week, Binghamton and Elmira Free Academy here on TV 12. You can see it live Saturday. You can see it by tape delay again Sunday. That's at 4.30. And, and we're going to have offside. Jumping offside. <laughs> goes, I'm okay. End of play. <laughs> Chris Pasquale certainly has done the yeoman work for UE tonight, hasn't he? Tom Pasquale. I believe the cousin Chris. Yes. Chris and Tom, right. Okay, now. <laughs> Let's do it again. We got the yardage back. <laughs> Try it one more time. All right. Vessel is going to be coming. They're going to be trying to block the punt. Only one man back. Jim Crundon can't get it off. He does finally go practically straight up. Oh, it takes a U.E. bounce. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Tempers are flaring and flags are all over the place. We have flags back here at midfield. We don't have a flag back where the ball was. Midfield will be... We've got... Definitely have a flag back here. Though. I saw a two, maybe three thrown. And they'll march it off. Personal foul, Vestal. 159 to go in the game. This 35th meeting of these two schools has been the banger that we expected. This official doesn't want to leave midfield. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 
The referee will mark it at the 11 yard and line. It looks like UE is trying to call a timeout here, too. And things are okay, they're moving the markers. We know they're doing that. One of UE's players was signaling for a timeout. Let's see what happens. They're going to give it to him. Now they're moving the back markers. They're moving the chains back. Back again. Okay, personal okay. foul. There's the call again. Okay. Personal. So the original. Okay, now what's going on? Now we have the explanation to the UE coach. <laughs> it has not been the smoothest of evenings. So the now we have a timeout, <laughs> UE. <laughs> Let's take a timeout right here, okay? We'll be back in just a second. It's UE 38, Vessel 25. Introducing McDonald's new lettuce and tomato hamburger the McDLT. You get a hot side hot, you get a cool side cool. You make DLT. Keeps the hot, keeps the cool. Make DLT, make DLT. Keeps the, keeps the. You make D. LT, couldn't the best tasting lettuce and tomato hamburger ever. Taste the great taste. Ah. Uh, new with D, LT. Endicott Lumber and Box now brings you something new in the Southern Tier, an incredibly comprehensive window and door showroom, where you can see for yourself how the world's best windows and doors will fit into your home. It's the largest showroom of its kind in central New York. Over 50 window and door units on display. Names like Anderson, Peachtree, and Permador. Plus added features like wood siding and indoor paneling. Whether you're remodeling or building new, look for the answers here in the area's only showroom of its kind. Only at Endicott Lumber and Box, 3010 Wayne Street, one block off Watson Boulevard and well. 8.8% APR on five top car lines. Business as usual from the same dealer who brings you 9.5% APR on used cars. Royal Motors Route 17C Owego. 1916, Canny Trucking was first founded in Binghamton. The company was based on the principle of offering dependable express service. A lot's changed since then, but Canny Trucking Company still maintains their headquarters in Binghamton. Canny Trucking delivers manufactured goods daily to upstate New York, the Scranton area, and metropolitan New York and New Jersey. Canny Trucking is proud to have been a part of the growth of the southern tier, and they continue to offer that same dependability to meet the needs of the communities they serve. Canny Trucking, expressly for you. We want to change your thinking about epilepsy. Folks don't know you can play professional basketball. Or play hockey. Or be a normal kid. Or even a U.S. congressman with epilepsy. Epilepsy's not what you think. Get the facts. Write Epilepsy Foundation, Washington, D.C., 20013. We have a minute and 59 seconds to go in this game. It is UE 38, Bessel 25. Paul, some thoughts as we close out here. <laughs> it's back and forth, back and forth, but, but UE has certainly come through when they needed to. They scored the big run. Uh, Tom Pasquale came through with those two long 70-yard touchdown runs. The beautiful pass play. He came through with a, that beautiful arm that just the, set that the nice. Tino Fiore. Oh, that was perfect. And he's, he's come through, and UE's come through when they needed to. When they needed to stop Vessel in a couple of places, they did, and that's been the difference. All right, it is first and 20 for Vessel. And the quarterback for Vessel is now Dennis Nealon, 22. And Paul Stive is finished for the evening. Time to get some other guys that you need next year, a little bit of workout, and see how they can do. Right. UE fans and bands starting to celebrate now. Winery was faking the blitz. Nealon in trouble. Whoa. Pursued. And Great down. tackle. 84, Joe San Giuliano. Just kept chasing him and chasing him. We're at one minute to go in this game. And running. Mark Westcott comes out for UE. 
Oliver Wilson, 37, checks in. And then now a timeout for Vestal. Vestal's been frustrated all night. Every time they seem to get something going, something would go wrong. Or UE would strike right back. They'd score that touchdown. They think they'd, okay, here we're going, guys. We're ready to go now. Bang, UE would come through with one of those quick touchdowns. Just take the steam right out of their sails every time they started to get going. Been a good game. Two solid teams. They both end the season now at six and two. Excuse me, seven and two. Uh, seven, seven and two. <laughs> oh, seven. That's, okay, let's get it. Seven and two. Seven and two. Right. Seven and two. Right. UE was six and two coming into this game. Right. Russell seven and one. Right. Seven and two. Tied for second in Division One. I know UE will win coming second in Division One. Vestal third because they have two losses in the division. UE's other loss comes outside the division, correct? You are correct, sir. That's right. Believe it, folks. We talked about this before the game. <laughs> <laughs> Just the end of the game. UE fans celebrating now. All right, 52 seconds to go in the game. Halen looking to run, and run he does. To stay out of the end zone, too. Barely stays out of the end zone. Another well, flag. Another flag again. Oh, boy, tempers are flaring now, and here we go. This is what we didn't want to see. 45 Manly. Both benches clearing, unfortunately. This is in football. This is an embarrassment to both schools. Let's take a timeout now and let the field clear. We'll be back in a moment. The work each of us does is more than a job. It is an opportunity to build a better world filled with peace and justice. Whoever you are, whatever you do, if you want peace, work for justice. Campaign for Human Development, United States Catholic Conference. As we join you, this one's over. The referees have decided to end it with 45 seconds to go in the game. And there's the final score, Union Endicott 38, Vestal 25, Paul any last second. Uh, it's too bad it had to end this way. It was a real good game. The kids, are, the kids get hot. It's, it's a traditional rivalry, a very strong rivalry. And it's just, it's good that the referees did end it so that we didn't have another problem as the game went down to the end. And at the end of the season, I guess they go after the goal flow. Well, that's the situation here at Vestal. Both teams end with seven and two marks. The final score, once again, UE 38, Vestal 25. On behalf of the entire Action Sports team, once again, our statistician, Seth Marlowe, Paul Daffney, and myself, Mitch Gross, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week at Waverly.